So in this part of the lecture on mutations, we're going to discuss some ways that we can classify different genetic changes or mutations as forward or back mutations. Um, and we're also going to talk about some of the phenotypic outcomes that mutations can have, right? And so a mutation is basically just defined as a heritable change in the genetic material. And that means a change in the DNA that can be passed down from one generation to the next. And there are different types of mutations. And we have a lot of descriptive words or adjectives that can describe mutations from kind of different angles. Um, we can describe mutations as to where they occur in the body or what type of cells they occur in. And so we can have germinal mutations, which occur in cells in the germline or the gametes. And we can have somatic mutations, which occur in the normal cells of your body, like a lung cell or a cheek cell. We can also talk about mutations as a result of kind of where they came from um, or their origin. And so a spontaneous mutation <laughs> will result from an error that happens during DNA replication. So while the DNA is being replicated, um, there's an error in that process. That error is not corrected, and that leads to a spontaneous mutation. Um, additionally, there are some types of mutations that result not from an error during replication, but rather from exposure of the DNA to some kind of physical stress like extreme heat or UV radiation or exposure to chemicals um, <coughs> that can actually cause damage to the DNA. And so an induced mutation results from exposure of DNA to one of these agents that actually causes a change to the DNA sequence. And we generally call anything that can mutate or change a DNA sequence, a mutagen. And so mutations can have a lot of phenotypic effects or uh, changes that we can actually see. And we can refer to mutations based on what type of phenotypic effect they have. Um, and so a silent mutation is a mutation that basically has no phenotypic effect at all. There's no visible changes. There's nothing that we can really see as a result of that change to the DNA. A visible mutation, on the other hand, is a mutation or a change in the DNA that causes a change in the morphology or <coughs> how an organism looks. And so visible and silent mutations are sort of opposites, where visible mutations affect something you can see, and a silent mutation has no phenotypic effect at all. Now, some mutations are more harmful than just causing a change to the phenotype of the organism or just to their morphology, something that you could see. Um, some mutations are actually able to prevent an organism from reproducing. So these genetic mutations or changes are called sterile mutations. They render an organism sterile or prevent it from um, continuing to reproduce. And some mutations are what we call lethal. And these genetic changes or changes to the DNA are mutations that tend to interfere with vital functions, things the organism needs to survive. And so lethal mutations often end in death. You can actually see here, this is a lethal mutation <laughs> that actually kills mice um, in their embryo state. And so if a, mice, if a mouse accumulates this mutation, um, it experiences this lethality, right? So we can describe mutations by where they occur in the body, which type of cells, we can describe them by how um, they're induced in the first place, whether they're spontaneous or induced by some kind of mutagen. And we can also describe them in terms of what they do phenotypically to an organism. <laughs> I'm looking a little bit kind of at more at that idea of defining them by what they do for phenotype. Um, we can also classify mutations as kind of forward or reverse mutations. And so a forward mutation is a mutation of what we would call a normal gene or wild type gene to a form that has a mutant phenotype. Generally, a forward mutation is a change in the DNA that inactivates a gene. And a wild type normal gene goes from working perfectly fine to not working. And here you can actually see 
a forward mutation kind of in at the molecular level or the level of the nucleotide sequence here at this position. Normally we'll see a T and an A in the DNA. <clears throat> There's a mutation here, a forward mutation that changes this T to a C, an A to a G. And that forward mutation would take this normal gene on the top and create an inactive form of the gene here on the bottom. Now there are some situations where a mutation can actually be reversed and a mutation can come in and restore the original phenotype that was lost due to an earlier mutation. And there's two different ways that a reverse mutation can work. <coughs> there's a back mutation and there's a suppressor mutation. And so in this situation we just spoke about, we had a forward mutation that changed the sequence of the DNA up here from wild type where there's a T and an A to mutation where there's a C and a G, right? That change in the DNA caused a phenotype. Then there was what we refer to as a reverse mutation or a reversion, where now this mutant gene went back to normal. This mutation back of from C to G to T to A occurs at the exact same place, the exact same site. And now if you look at this sequence on the bottom and the original sequence, you notice that they're identical to each other. And so there was a forward mutation to convert the wild type gene into a mutant that didn't work. And then there was a back mutation or basically a complete reversal of that sequence back to normal. <clears throat> and as the sequence goes back to normal, so does the function of the gene. There's also a situation called a suppressor where there's an additional mutation that's not at the same exact site, that's not just going back to normal, but can actually reverse or compensate for the effect of the first mutation. So here we have a wild type gene on the top. It was mutated with a forward mutation and no longer works. If this mutation in red goes back to exactly the way it was before or is reverted, that's known as a back mutation. This mutation going back exactly the same as it was before. <coughs> However, if the mutation stays, there can be a suppressor somewhere else near that gene in a different site that's not able to completely reverse this mutation, but it is able to compensate for what that mutation was doing and basically stop the um, negative phenotype that was associated with the reverse mutation in the first place. And so a back mutation is basically a complete correction of a mutant phenotype. The forward mutation creates a mutant phenotype, something negative. The back mutation corrects it at the source at the exact same spot. A suppressor is able to correct the phenotype, but doesn't convert the genetic sequence back to wild type. <clears throat>